Okay, in this video, I'm going to do another example problem. There seem to be some um, some people saying they like that. So we're going to do chapter six, problem 30, which asks us to create a game of sorts uh, to play guess which number, okay, between the one and a thousand. And um, we're going to do this in, in pieces. And I think doing it in pieces will be useful. Okay, so I've looked at the program, but I haven't really done any, any programming with it. We're going to kind of develop it along the way, okay? And one thing I'm going to do, because the chapter also talks about methods, uh, also known as functions, I'm going to go ahead and make the getting of the number a function. Now, you wouldn't have to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and add a little more to it. Then we'll talk about, you know, how the, how the gameplay is going to work and how to do an iterative process where we start and test some things out and then add more features to it, okay? So let's go ahead and, and share Eclipse and get started on this. So I've just started a new class, you know, again, just to, to see what, what I'm doing here. Let me actually stop the share and share my entire screen because if I have any dialogue boxes, I found that those don't show up. Okay, so now, now we're in Eclipse. If there are dialogue boxes, you'll be able to see them, I believe. Okay, so again, to get here, all I did was do a file, new, down to class, and then I, I selected, I did want the public static void main. And then I got rid of the default comments that were there, okay? So I'm just calling this C6P30, okay? And if you ever notice the little asterisk here, I may have mentioned that before, that just means you haven't saved it yet. I've, by default, you have to save it before it will run it, compile it and run it, but I don't, I, I have it save automatically, okay? You may or may not want that. Okay, so <clears throat> the first thing we're gonna do here, the, the section of the book talks about um, random numbers, how to do random numbers. Okay, first, a quick aside, Make sure that you're putting in some kind of comment block up here. Okay, you need to have at least what the, the program is, what it's doing, all that stuff, okay, in order to be able to um, figure it out, okay? Uh, so I often will grade these en masse, I'll download them all, and just having your name there makes life much easier. I uh, took, so, took away, I think, five points on the first. I've graded the first two homework assignments. I've graded everything that's been due so far. Uh, most of them were fine. Um, what I typically do, I look at all of them. I'll, I'll look more in, intently at one, the same one for everybody, or maybe a couple, depending on the assignment. Okay. So I'm not running every single program that you write, but I'm getting an idea as to what's going on. Okay. So again, you want that basic block information in there. Anyway, so back to the section on random numbers. Before we get to the idea with methods, we have to import first off the java.security.securerandom. Okay, so that's where we're going to get the random from. Okay, and I am now, in order to create one, and, and I guess we can go ahead and, and just print out a random number from here. Um, no, actually not. I'm going to go ahead. So I'm, I'm thinking I want a method. Okay. So just to make sure we're clear on this, that this section here, this is our main class that has the name here, that's the same name as the name of the Java file, okay? So we wanna make sure that those are the same or it's gonna give you an error, okay? Let me pause just for one second and I will be right back. Okay, sorry about the break, I had a kid to pick up issue, which is odd because my daughter's much older than you would imagine, but she's allowed to be picked up. So anyway, it happens sometimes. Uh, anyway, so um, we're going to do this this method, okay? We're going to do that. Again, it's not required for this, this thing, but I want to do that. So again, this part I've highlighted is the main, in, in particular, this is the main function. So that's it right here, okay? Every class that you're going to run, so every application has a main that runs first, okay? If you want to have a separate method, you have to put it below we end the main. Okay, so, and I've suggested this to some of you. I'm going to go ahead and put in here that this is going to end the main, and this is going to end class. Uh, someone said that that they just put in curly brackets until it quits complaining. That's okay, but this is a little more nuanced way of doing that, okay? So again, when I'm going to create this, this particular um, method here, okay? The method I want it to be public. I want people. I want every application to be able to get to it. Okay. I want to make it static. 
I'm making it static again because I'm not making objects of this class. We talked in another video, I talked about how we're either creating classes, which we have the private, the public, all that stuff, and we create instances of that class. So we had the account and the account test or the date and the date test. This isn't that way, okay? This is just, we're just writing a program, writing an application. So we're making it a public static. And we want this one to return that integer. Again, we're guessing which number between one and a thousand. Okay, here's a tip on testing, a couple of things on testing. Uh, unless you want to be playing your own game until the end of time, don't start off between one and a thousand. Okay, start off between one and 10. You can change that later, okay? The other thing to avoid or that you can do, you can print out what the guess is so you know and you can test it, okay? So anyway, in the game plays, it's gonna be like you would imagine, you're gonna guess a number, the player's gonna guess a number, you're gonna to say too low or too high, so we're gonna to have to keep looping until they get done. Okay, but we're not there yet. So we're doing this public static int. Okay, I'm gonna call it get number. You can call it whatever makes sense to you. Okay, but it's going to take an int n. This is going to allow us to customize the range. Okay, and I'm gonna get lots of errors as I go along here, but we're just gonna stick with it. And the error I get now is interesting, and it's gonna tell me, as you can see here, the method must return a, a result of type int. Okay, so because I put an int here, it has to say return something that's an int at some point, but I'm not ready for that yet. Okay, but what I am going to do, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to create my object that's going to generate my random numbers. Okay, it's be my secure random, that's the type that it is, rn is equal to new secure random. Okay, it takes no parameters there. Okay, so that's going to set up my secure random object. Okay, I can now use that to get a random number. Okay, so I'm going to create an int called r is equal to one plus rn dot next int. Okay think about this just a little bit because I think that the number okay it, it may be n minus one because if I if I do um let me check the book real quick just to see uh, nope one, one plus one plus that number yeah we're good so that's fine um so and then inside of this is going to be the n I'm sending in okay so I'm going to be able to get a random number between one and uh, whatever that n is. So we'll send it a thousand eventually, we'll send it 10 to begin with, okay, or five, make it even easier, okay? So note that I don't need another variable here. If, if this makes more sense to you, you can do this and then do a return, return r, okay? Life's good, okay? But I can also just, because What's to the right of an equal sign here is itself an integer. I can just return that. Okay, I'm going to return that. And this is more the programmy way to do it. Okay, it's going to return that. But again, I think that's less clear in some ways. So either way is okay. Okay, so now I have this function. I'm not getting any errors. Doesn't mean that it's working yet, but let's test it. Okay, so I'm just going to up here do a system dot out dot print line on a call to this function. Okay, I'm calling it get number. I'm going to send it, let's say 100. Okay, the tab key will make it line up correctly for you. Okay, so this is going to, and again, how things work when I start this class, when I hit run, when I start the application, it's going to start, go to line 10 first, go to main. It's going to execute line 12. At line 12, it's going to call the get number function on 100. It's then going to, so it's going to go down to line seven. It's going to stop at that point when it sees that, waiting to print something. It's going to go to line 17 and then do the 19. And at 20, it's done. It goes back, fills in this with the number coming from down here and prints it out. Okay, so again, in memory, the main's in memory. It's going to pop up the get number, does what it does. It's going to return the value back. Okay, that's how it's going to happen. So while we're doing it, let's make sure we don't get the same number every time, which can happen. So I'm just gonna put a bunch of these in here. Cut and paste is easy. Okay, 
all these numbers should be between one and 100, or heck, we can do 1,000 if you want. Doesn't really matter. Get a little bit bigger range. I could also do a little while loop if you wanted to put in a bunch of numbers, okay? Well, let's just do this, run it, see what we get, okay? We get some numbers, 297, 732, and so forth. Run it again, should get different numbers. Yeah, get lots of different numbers, okay? So I'm confident this function's working, okay? So um, if you're doing a lot of stuff, pull out in here, say this is tested, check mark. We think it's working, okay? Uh, so we don't have to worry about that anymore. So now we can go back up here and start building our game. Okay. So the game is going to involve a couple of steps. The first one is that we're going to have to um, get a random number. And we'll have to decide how big we want our random numbers to be. We're not going to ask the user, although we could certainly, but we're not going to. Okay. Which reminds me, we are going to have to have the user input something, okay? So that means we're going to have to have uh, our scanner to do that, right? Okay. So let me find what I want to where I want to put set here. So I'm going to do all that within the main. So let me go ahead and get this out of the way. Okay. So I'm going to say scanner input is equal to new scanner on the system dot in, okay? And if you're looking closely, you will realize, I don't have that memorized. You know, I don't do uh, Java every day of my life. Um, so what doesn't it like? So I have to look it up. Scanner input is equal to new scanner system. Oh, I didn't include what I need to include. Okay, I have to include up here import as well import java.util.scanner. Okay, should be good now. Now we're good, okay? And, and I think that's okay. So the important point is, we're not taking in-person tests, okay? This might be a long, long video. I'm sorry if it is, but I think this is good information, okay? I think that, that you should know that you have to get a scanner object. If not, it's going to take you forever. And you should know to look in, in the examples in the book and find one. That's what I did, done. You saw me do it, okay? Um, I could have kind of guessed at the syntax, no point in doing that, okay? And as an active programmer, you typically have resources available. When you do these enough, you'll just memorize them, but I don't care if you memorize it. I, I, I want you to know how to use it when you have that available, okay? You always have a manual, you always have the internet on the job, okay? So we're gonna start by getting our random number here, okay? And I can go ahead it's not a bad idea, once I've done these things, to go ahead and figure what we want our variables to be. Okay, so we're going to have an int for the guess the user's going to get, and we're going to have a number, which is going to be the answer. And sometimes we can call it answer, whatever you want to call it. Okay, I may need others, but I think that's it for now. Okay, so I want my answer then to be equal to, I want to call my get number. Okay, and let's do this on a uh, thousand, might as well. Um, now, if I'm a test, let's do it on 10. We can change that. It's easy enough to change. Okay. So now I'm going to get my answer. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to go get a guess from the user. Okay. And we're going to keep getting guesses until they get the right answer. Okay. So that's not a counting loop. It's going to be a loop. But it's not a counting loop. It's going to be a sentinel control loop. Okay. So um, I can go ahead, a couple of ways to do it. The most classic way to do it is to ask for the first guess right away. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and say uh, guess is equal to input dot get, no, next int. Okay. But as I always want to forget to do, but I caught myself this time, I have to put a print in there, system.out.print, enter a number between one and, and let me go ahead and put 
Yeah, so uh, plus, um, oh, I'm not using a variable there, so I'm going to say one to ten. I'll have to change that too. Okay, I can make that a variable. It may make my life easier, but I'm not going to worry about it. Okay. Um, yeah, so I need to worry about that. And then, and Eclipse sometimes wants to put that in the wrong spot. So let's put it in the right spot. Okay, it could be number between one and ten. Okay, so what doesn't it like here? Oh, this has to have. Yeah, when you use a number that many times, then you want to go ahead and have a value for it. So let's do an int uh, max equal to ten. Okay, so then I can do that on max, and then I can say that between one and I think I can say plus max here. Okay, and then I can say max there. Oh, no, it doesn't need that there. I don't know what it doesn't like there. Oh, there's a has randomly there. It wants next int. Okay, so just to make sure this part's working, I'm going to go ahead and do system dot out dot print line. And again, I'm going to put that in there just so I know. Plus answer. Plus guess. Okay. Spaces in there. And again, we're not doing any testing yet. We're going to eventually have to do some testing to make sure that our numbers are valid. But for now, we're going to do this. See if this works. Okay. So I'm going to go through, you know, a number between one and 10. And that's ugly. I'm going to fix it. In our six, okay. So the answer was six, but it was nine. My guess was a six, okay. So we're good. So now we know we need to go back and fix this. Um, plus max, plus. Try now. Much better. Number between one ten. I'll do a five, and the answer was a one, okay. So we're on the way. So um, again, you can comment this out because you may need it again later. You can leave it in there if you need to, but that's okay. But the general rule is, and the, again, these the, I'm going to put these together. It doesn't matter at all as far as the program goes, but just they're a unit, right? We're asking for the input there, okay? All this accomplishes what um, in Python, like a raw input would do. It has a prompt built in. We have two separate things here, okay? So, and again, we put a print, not a print line because we want to keep it all on the same line, okay? So again, now I've got the number that they've guessed, their guess, and I've got the answer, okay? So I'm gonna go into a while loop, okay? So I'm gonna say while answer not equal to guess, okay? And I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that because I don't think we need it again, but that should have been before we get into that, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and put in my closing brackets just so I know I'm, I'm good there. Okay. So it's pretty common the way these, these loops work that we're first going to ask the user for a number. Okay. Uh, then we go into the loop. Okay. And then we're going to stay in the loop until they get it right, which means we're going to, have to ask them again at the end of the loop. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste these two lines down to there. Okay, so I know I'm going to have to do that. So I know when I loop around, we're fine. Okay, I'm also going to make a note here that if I get to here, they won. Okay, because I'm going to stay in that while loop until when? Until answer is equal to guess. Okay, there's no way for them to give up at this point. Okay, so we're just going to let that be what it is. Um, you can always give them a way out if you want, but, but we don't have to. Okay. So what we have to do each time. So now we know 
that the answer is wrong. So right here, we know the answer or the, the guess is wrong, okay? So we have an if, and we know it can't be equal. If answer is equal to guess, we wouldn't be here, okay? So we can just say, if the guess is bigger than the answer, okay, then we know we're at a too high and an else too low. And make sure you think that out correctly. And that may be wrong. That could, that's easy to get confused. But if we say that our guess is is higher, so if the if the answer is five and they put in ten, then it would fall here and it would be too high. Okay. And, and you don't need to leave that as a comment. We can just change this to a system.out.print line that this is too high. Other way around, it's going to be too low. I'll go ahead and just copy that, save a little bit of time. This is too low. Okay. So that's going to keep working. It's going to give them the options, and we should be okay. So let's go ahead and, and while we're at it, get this taken care of and, and our basics are going to be here. You want. Okay. So let's just run this and see where we're at. See what problems we're going to have. Okay. So again, the smart way to do this is like a binary search. I'm going to do a five. I entered a number that's too low. So go into the middle, do a seven. I want. Okay. Got it into two choices. Not too bad. Okay. So one thing you may want to do now, again, just to, um, well, I still have that in the, I'm going to go ahead and print out here, cheat of answer while you're testing it. You're going to want to take that out later. Okay. But for right now, so when I run it, I know the answer is six. So if I say one, it says too low. If I say eight, it says too high. If I say six, now it's correct. Okay, so I can just test it out. So we're gonna leave that in there for now as our numbers get bigger. You don't wanna be testing to a thousand yourself, okay? So th this is the basics of the program, right? I mean, this is most of what it wanted. It wanted us to go through and say too high or too low until you win, okay? Let's make this a little more exciting because Exclamation points always make things more exciting. And if you're going to use one, why not use three? You know, don't be a little excited, be a lot excited. Okay. So we've got that. But the other thing now that we have to think about, okay, is that it wants to ask if we want to play again. Okay. So we have to think about where, where that's going to be for them to play again. Okay. So they're going to have to go all the way back to here, to 18. Okay, and get a whole new game. Okay, everything else should be okay from that. Okay, so I have some options here. Okay, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be asking the user if they want to continue. So I might have a variable for that. Okay, so we can just make that an integer, um, enter, I don't know, zero to quit, something. Um, you could have them type in yes, but then you get, oh, we can do a wire in. That's okay. Let's do a wire in. Okay. So let's let's do this as a um, string. Do I put a capital S on string? It's, it's going to give me a hard time either way. So we'll see. String. Um, I want this to be, let's call this choice. Equal to. Okay. Seems okay. Just tell me I haven't used it yet. Okay. So what I have to do now is I have to put this entire thing inside of another loop. 
Okay. So I'm going to say here while choice is equal to y, and this first time it should be a y. This is a case where you could do a do while if you want, but I don't like do whiles. Or can't do an or. I think I do. Again, this, this varies by language. Or choice is equal to a small y, just in case. In both cases, I'm testing equality, so I need two equal signs. Okay. So while choice is equal to y, or choice little y or big y, then I'm going to play the game. Okay. Then I need to do all of this down to there, okay, which is going to end um, the round while. Okay. And all this needs to, to be tabbed over just so we can see what's happening. Again, it should still work. Notice that fixed a lot of my errors when I did that. Let me tab this over. It takes a little while, but I think it's worthwhile. Again, with Python, you had to do this. With Java, you don't have to do it. But I think it's still a good idea. Okay, so now it lines up. Okay, so now it should, um, but what we have to do now. So there is one more thing we have to do. After we print out the one, we have to ask them, do they want to play again? Okay, so here I can do um, ask if they want to play again. Again, it's got to be inside the while loop or the while loop never ends. Okay, do that with the system dot out dot print and say, do you want to play again? Yes or no. And then the colon. Oh, this is a colon. Colon space. Okay. So we're going to ask, do you want to play again? Then I can do my uh, choice is going to equal my input dot get or next string. Is that what I want? It's next TR, I think. No, my uh, cheats didn't help me. No, that's what I want to do here. Let's see if it mentions anything. I want to get next, it just says. Okay, we'll try that. That does a string automatically. Okay, and <clears throat> we don't have to worry about the no here because um, yes gets them back whatever else. Whatever they else they type in, they can type in Bob's your uncle. All that's going to just be a no, okay? But if they enter a small Y or a big Y, we're going to be okay, okay? Um, we may be ready to go. I don't know. I feel like the printout's going to be a little funny on this one, but let's let's just try it. Oh, and I, and I didn't close my input. I need to do that, okay? So from down here, I can do the input don't close because all that error message or that caution. Okay, I think we're okay. Let's try. How bad can it be? Make my screen a little bit bigger here. Run this here. Okay. Answer between one and 10. We know the answer is uh, a one. So let's do a five. That's too high. Let's do a three. That's too high. That's a one. We won. Do you want to play again? See, I'm missing a parentheses there. Okay. Uh, let's say yes. It does nothing. Okay. So we got something wrong. We got an issue. Okay, we'll figure it out. Okay, so let's figure out the easy thing first here, and then I don't have, I need that there. Okay, so um, 
I don't know where we're running into trouble here. So I think the choice is okay. My or may not be okay. Let's just take away that choice for now. Okay, let's see if that fixes anything. And it may be in the wrong place. I may be asking the wrong place. I think about this. Again, I didn't do this in advance. Oh, that's not what I wanted. I'm not in the other editor, so I can't do that. Okay. Uh, hopefully I didn't do anything stupid there. Let's try this now. Okay. So this I want to just do it. Boom. Do you want it? You won. Yes. Still nothing. Okay, we're still not happening. So let's see. Let's see what's happening. Okay, so in that case, I know because I'm printing out the cheat that the answer is four. So my first guess is correct. Okay, so it's going to say the answer, this is false. So I'm going to go all the way down to here. It's going to print that you won. It's going to print, uh, do you want to, to play again? Yes or no. It's getting the next. Okay, this ends the while, it goes back to there choice is equal to y. Don't know. I'm not sure if that's, it may be a problem in our in our next there. So let's do a system.out.println on choice just to see what it's doing. Okay, then we have to look that up. Run this. Again, because of the cheat, I know a three. Do you want to play again? Yes. Okay, that, that seems okay. Okay, so that's not the issue. So I'm not sure what the issue is. Okay, so let's see if, um, can I get, let's see what I can do with that. I wonder if it's putting in too many characters. Okay, it's possible I'm getting crap in my input. So let's let choice be equal to the choice, the character at zero. Let's see what that does. Might not help us at all. Give me an error there for some reason. Oh, it's converting. That's what it can't do. Because um, that's now a character. That's not what I want. So what if we, okay, I think this is the issue. So I'll show you what I'm gonna do rather than stop the video. I'm gonna go over here to here. I'll pop up a new window and I, I, the book may say it, but who knows. So I'm gonna enter a string from command line Java. And I think that's probably where we're running into trouble, okay? I don't know that site, but let's see if that tells us anything here. Okay, so they're doing something weird, so we don't care about that. Change this. Oh, it's not flipping like on. That's not what I'm doing. Java using scanner, that's what I'm doing. Okay. Well, that could be the issue. It, it's um, a next line, it's saying. Let's see, see if that fixes it. Okay, those are good skills to have too. So forget all that idea, that was a bad idea. I'm not gonna go there. We could convert it to, but that's just the wrong. Okay, so it said next line, right? That's what it said. Next, where did it say it? Somewhere. Next line. Okay. Let's try it. See if it works. Again, we've got the cheat code. So it's a two. We'll play again. We won. We'll play again. Yes. It's never getting us there. Okay. Why not? But we've done something else. After you've won, do you want to play again? It's saying that. 
choice is equal to input dot next line. Well, let me do that. Okay. Let's see. Something else we can find out here. There's the Java scanner. Maybe I want two string. The book probably says, and, and this this is not potentially the most effective way to do this. Let's try it now. Two, play again, yes. It's still not letting me, okay, something I'm doing here, I've made a change, I don't know what I've done. So apparently it wasn't too strange. So let's see if the book says, in case we're dealing with a, a version issue, look in the back of the book. I will stop the video for that. I'm just going to look in the book, see if the book says anything. We're really close here. OK, so I took a, I, I did look through the book a bit and um, figured out what was happening. The next line is fine. That's not the problem. The problem is, of all things, um, that when we're doing, where does it do it at? Where do you want to play a game? Yeah, while well, choice equals. The equals equals here because we haven't talked about this much yet, but strings are complex data types. They're not simple data types. Okay. So when I ask two equal signs here, it's asking if they occupy the same memory address, which is not what we want. Okay. What we do want here is to say, choice dot is equal to y. Okay. And that should fix it. And that that's weird. And yeah, if I did Java more, I would know that. But uh, if we were integers, we were OK. But it's not going to work with that. What does it look like? Um, is it not is equals? What did I just find? Uh, or equals. Sorry, just equals. There we go. equals. Right. So with strings, that's good to know. I mean, we'll run into this later. Uh, I could have just, the simpler way would have been to use an ant, um, enter one to try again, zero to quit. And that would have been okay too, but this is going to be more correct. Okay. Let's try this now and see. Okay. So we know it's a two, I'm going to enter a five, that's too high, enter a two and it's correct. Do you want to play again? Let me say no. And that has quit working again when it just wasn't. It's the next line that's causing it to die. I just did an example where this worked, and I'm not sure. Okay, so let's just go. Let's just go the ugly way. I will figure that out eventually. Uh, let's make that that an ant. I know there's a solution there, but it's not worth it. And for you either, if you're working on the homework problems, just get them done, you know, at some point, you, you fooled with enough. Okay, so we're going to say that um, one continues and zero quits. Okay, so we want it to be a one for now. So we're going to say while choice, I can now use the equals, choice equals one, we're going to continue on. Okay. What doesn't that like? I've got too many of those now. That makes sense. Okay. So now I can hear, do you want to play again? We're going to change this to one to play again, zero to quit. This is going to be our old friend next. Int. Let's see if that fixes it. We got more trouble. We were doing so well. Okay, so it's going to be a 10. Do a 10. 
So I'm going to say a zero on a quit. We quit. Good. Try it again. Okay. So that's a nine. Let's say a nine. Do you want to play again? One. Play again. Good. It's a nine again, which happens. Okay. You want to play again? Yep. One. Now it's a five. Okay. Okay. Zero to quit. Okay. So this is working. And, you know, it's it's a little ugly that, that we're using that integer. And I will eventually figure out what the string is, but this, this video has gone on 15 minutes already. Um, so that's probably enough. But if you're having questions about this, again, the things that we've talked about here, we talked about creating this new method, how we do that. Okay, it's a static method. And we talked about why that's a static method. Then we've got our game play here. All this was fine. This outer choice here, we had trouble on the string, but otherwise we were working okay. Okay, so hopefully this is useful to you and it makes sense and uh, you get to see kind of the ugly of, of how programs get made. But if you have questions, make sure you let me know.